Welcome back, Skyliners, to Super Duperville, episode 24, One Order of Spaghetti. Please, I should add please to that. Oh, well, uh, I am Mike of Dragon Rider Gaming. Thank you so very much for joining me. Thank you for checking out a City Skylines episode. I appreciate it. Today we have three goals, one big goal and two smaller goals to accomplish. Uh, one of them is just going to be kind of playing around with an idea that I have. Uh, number one, we're going to start the layout for Spaghetti Hills. Yes! Going to move into the mountains. I'm excited for this one because it is much more of a, uh, an inspirational build. It's not really structured and laid out like Stutopia was with the with the rings and Positiveville was with, with the block grid and very, very straight roads and everything. This one's going to be kind of freelance, so I'm, I'm excited to get to that. Um, number two, we are going to grow Positiveville and the University of Super Duperville a little bit more, work on uh, some residential commercial things. I'm trying to still get the industrial demand back. Uh, I got an idea for that as well, and hopefully you have some office space maybe that we can move in. Uh, number three, I'm going to build a water pond. So kind of like we had our sewage farm, I'm going to build a water pond to complement the sewage farm. But not on the same side of the city. I'm going to go to the opposite side of the city, I think. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll figure out a spot for it. Um, anyway, what you're seeing here on your in the start, startup area is the eastern and western train hubs. And look at all the friggin' people! <laughs> we, we left off the last episode looking at Positiveville train hub. Uh, but this is the eastern and western train hubs of passengers coming into the city. Look at these guys using our... What, what I guess has been referred to as a cheese trap or a, a, a cheese moneymaker cheese thing. I don't know what the cheese is other than cheese is delicious and I like putting it in my belly. Um, but yeah, so if we get right into it here and we go to Eastern Train Hub, this is where I left off. I still got the game paused. Here's everybody that just rolled out of here. Uh, a couple things you're going to notice different about this area, and you may have noticed it. I moved these gates in just a little bit. People were still walking up to that corner here and kind of coming through this area of the gate. And I was thinking I was losing money, so I wasn't really sure. So I moved the gates in. I had to move the road in a little bit just to clean it up and make sure it's uniform. And the other thing you may notice... I don't know if you did notice or if you even care, but the toll booth here, I figured out what the heck was going on. And it is that the toll, and I, I switched this around. And if you remember, the sign was on the other side and the toll booth is coming the opposite way. And I have it up here right now because I want to put one down here to demonstrate. Whoops, if I can get it kind of, this is how I had to put it in before. And if I go around to this side and I put it in what should be the correct way, I'm just going to drop it out here and we go back to like a regular road. You see the arrow is pointing the wrong way. This is considered a left-hand drive by the author and this is considered right-hand drive. Now, left-hand drive is a United States side of the road. We drive on the left, we drive on the right side of the road, but the driver's seat is on the left part of the vehicle. Okay, so the steering wheel and everything is on the left. And that is considered left-hand drive, LHD left-hand drive. And the right-hand drive, obviously, is the opposite. Uh, people in Europe and other areas drive on the right-hand, or drive on the left-hand side of the road. And their steering wheel then is on the right-hand side of the vehicle. So when you're in a right-hand drive, you would not be coming this direction. You would, as, my, as you follow my arrow, this direction. You'd be coming this direction. So this left-hand drive is actually a right-hand drive and vice versa because you label it RHD it's right-hand drive that's European version left-hand drive should be US version and I forget who else has left-hand drive I think uh, places like Singapore and I don't know where else <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the metric system us u.s people we're, we're crazy and just we do crap differently i don't know why anyway i fixed all of these i got all of these in place and up the value back up to these but this is what i want to look at eastern train hub what says four thousand dollars and i think i waited too long to come check this one out this was i'm not kidding you eighty four hundred dollars last week so we made eighty four hundred dollars last week and another four thousand this week 
just from some people getting dropped off. I want to shoot over and check out. I, my cat is attacking the bag. Get out of here. Shoot. Get, 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 get out of here. Shoot. Get. Ow. Ow. <laughs> He's clawing back at me. <laughs> He's thinking I'm playing with him. Yeah, so if we look at Western Train Hub, that made $4,000 just with a small set of people that came through. I mean, it's not small. That's pretty darn significant, but all these people rolling through here. Anyway, as I scare my cat out of the building, um, number one, let's let's get right into it here. Uh, no, well, I'm a little late doing that, but let's buy some squares because we got to, we're going to work in Spaghetti Hills here, so we got to buy these last two squares. That puts us, uh, what is that, three-fifths of our entire grid that we're going to be working with, so that's cool. Uh, so now we have access. So the idea here with Spaghetti Hills, so I'm going to have an entrance point off this intersection, and that will come up into the hills. And the idea is, is that I'm just going to have a main road run through these hills here, some, somewhere, somehow. And it will kind of come through the middle and then out this end, and then this will be an exit point that will come down into industry land as whenever we get that in down here. And it will kind of offer another exit point that maybe people can get into uh, uh, Super Duper World when we build that in this area. And I'll have another leg that comes off this side that comes down into this area, which is where uh, Roundabout Berg, Roundabout Berg, yeah, where we're going to put Roundabout. I know these crazy names. And then we will also have an entrance that comes off of here that just kind of connects into the main road somehow and just offer an alternative.
Okay, so I think that's going to be it for Spaghetti Hills for now. I see some areas that I probably could continue to develop, like this little area here. It's kind of just like a lowland hills area and probably have an entrance come off of here and come down and populate this area if we need to expand upon it. Uh, we don't have to. Uh, I think that's pretty good amount of roads. Most of them don't have ridiculous curves in them. Uh, most of them flow pretty good. Uh, there's a couple wonky junctions like this that kind of come down and do a bounce, bounce, bounce as they come down. Uh, I had to restart my game. I got stuck in uh, having traffic, having this version on, and it put that uh, white background on, and I couldn't get rid of it, so I had to restart my game there. Saved it and restarted it. But let me jump over real quick to University Super Duperville, see where we're at as far as our academic year. So I've been on slow mode the whole time, so that's good. We still have 16 weeks. Uh, let's see, our campus attractiveness is good. I think we'll hit the student capacity. We got space for 3,150 students, but we got to be able to draw them in. Now, one of the things that I have not done is varsity sports. You see this over here. I have not done varsity sports, which I do want to drop in a building for varsity sports, which will draw an absolute ton of people. I'm just checking the level of the ground here because I'm thinking this is where I want to do it, but... I also want to do another cheese trap for this area just so that we can make good money. I mean, we're making 20000 a week right now, but why not make more? And as you see, our demand is not up at all. Our commercial demand is low. Our, our industrial demand has not budged. So I'm going to actually go into my budget. And I think for industrial and office buildings, I'm going to drop the tax rate just didn't back to 9%. Um, it's not going to make us as much money, but <clears throat> hopefully that will that will push some demand up so that we can build some industry down the line here in some office space. So what I'm thinking of putting in here is a sports stadium. Let me get a drink. I think the type of sports building we want to look at, let's take a look at them here. So we have our varsity sports area and we can do an aquatic center. We can do a basketball arena, track and field stadium, baseball park, and a football stadium. So I think the first thing we're going to put in is a football stadium. And that should draw a lot of people to some games uh, that we can have going on here. And, uh, like I said, I want to do a cheese trap, but the problem is inside of a university zone, you can't put down a park. So you can't put down the gate entrance and stuff and charge them a bunch of money for going through. So I think the the, the cheesy cheat way, <laughs> is that a word, cheesy cheat? I want to put it here. So let's uh, let, me, let me go back to the stadium to figure out, okay, how big is this place? So that's a pretty good size. If I can put it out here towards the water some, Put it right about here, and I think what I'll do is I'll put parking lots on this, I'm sorry, parking lots on this side uh, of this area so when people drive in, they can park here, and then they can come to the stadium here. It's over the water, nice little view over the water. That'd be kind of cool. And in between, I'll put it like out here, and it doesn't even need to be that far. It could probably be... Probably, I don't know, can I do it within four? No, because it takes two units deep, so it has to go about there to have a gate on each side, move them in, and have a path between it. And we basically just set this here, and uh, people can come and get out of their cars, park across the street, walk across the street, and then they can walk right into our cheese trap. Okay, so now we have our football stadium in place. Look at this thing. Oh, we got to build up the shoreline. We'll fix that in a minute. But there's our football stadium. And these guys are American Football Stadium. What are these guys? Oh, they're the Spartans. Well, that doesn't work out. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. You may not understand why I'm laughing at that. Um, I'm laughing at that because here in Michigan, we have two. Uh, 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 it's a friendly rival. It's it, We got some people pretty heavy on each side. But we have the University of Michigan, who are the Wolverines. And then we have... 
MSU, and that's U of M, and then we have MSU, Michigan State University, who are the Spartans. So obviously, University of Super Duperville, it, not appropriate to call them the Spartans. Um, yeah, so we could choose team color, okay. Oh my God, we can change it. Okay, I was worried I was gonna have to rebuild this. So we could go with the Lions. That's the Detroit Lions. That doesn't work. Uh, the Eagles, okay. The Buccaneers, that's pirate kind of thing. Okay, Broncos and allig Alligators. Here we go. So the Alligators, eh, close enough to a Wolverine, I guess. I don't know, kind of Wolverine looking. And the colors are pretty darn good. So team color, actually I might go with a little bit more of a darker maze on that about there because U, U of M is maize and blue and uh, Michigan State University is green and white so we will do both those. so these guys are going to be alligators as close as I can get to Wolverines unfortunately and uh, then the other guys will be uh, the Spartans let me delete this real quick and what we're going to do here is we need to it's going to be a little tricky to do so right now we have the university campus. If I try to go in here to campus areas and try and paint in a park area, turn that off, I can't do it within the park. I'm, I'm clicking right now and I can't draw within the park. So I have to go outside of the park and draw in and it'll create this little zone right here in front of the stadium. So it's, the stadium is still in the campus area. So that works. I don't need it to be this big. I'm just kind of drawing it just to just to do that. And then we're going to go back to campus area. And we... Oh, what the heck in the heck? Oh, because I erased industry area. Here we go. Okay, this is the one I want. Uh, so go back to campus area and we can fill this back in. Nice. Right up to the edge. Clean that up. Bring this back. It does not even need to be that big. Um, I'm afraid if I do it too close, it's going to... Yeah. Got to be careful. I don't want to bump it too far. On this side, bring this side in. There we go. Bring that down. Right to the edge. Okay. So, so now we got Garnet Gardens. <laughs> kind of a silly name. And we go into our parks here. We'll just do a regular city park. Nothing special. Okay. Sweet. Up the price. Okay, so we're going to see if this works. I, I don't know if it will or not. We'll see. I don't know. We can always change it to something else. Uh, Two-lane plain street. I kind of like that because then it kind of blends in a little bit better. It makes it much larger, though. No, I think that I like that better. Yeah, it kind of blends in a little bit better with the surrounding area. And we can, we can doll it up a little bit. And then on this side of the road... Uh, I'm going to unpause it now. On this side of the road, I'm going to actually put in one of those roads, one of the walking paths, like this.
nice little fenced in parking area that people can come in and park their cars. So, when is our first game? So, our first game is 17 3 2067, which is, um, I always got to take a second to think about this because in the US, of course, we do month, day, year, and this is day, month, year. So, this is March 17th. And it's currently February 5th, so. Oh, I'm excited. We got a football stadium. <laughs> and that should draw in some more people, right? That's good. It moved this down here as a result. That's good. So alligators. Info here. We got 630 attractiveness. That should draw in some more students, hopefully. And hopefully we get one more academic work. We got a pretty good chance. And we only got nine weeks to go. So I got to come back up here when we hit... March 17th so I have just over a month before our first match so that'll work the last thing I want to do today is I want to put in a water park and I was looking at this area and I really think this is kind of a dead zone area this entire lower section that's why I'm thinking of developing even out into here so it fills in the area a little bit more but this looks like a good spot for a water park I call it uh, here's the sewage farm over here and if we had the water park over here, it kind of keeps them separate and, and distant and stuff. And what else is going on here? We just got, you know, a couple buildings that don't have a lot of traffic. That The water doesn't draw any traffic. So I was thinking of putting it kind of centralized on this ramp here. I was thinking about moving to inland here, but I was like, no, I, I don't want to I don't want to eat up this area. I want to leave this open for airport. Uh, and then I can have as much up here as I want for uh, Eden Valley. You know, that's one of the last ones we're going to be building. But it'd be nice to have a nice big open area that we could put in a nice big golf course here, whatever we want to do with that, um, and be able to spread it out. You know, I was going to put in a very tightly built golf course in this area, but it would be nice to just have it out here or something uh, and see what we could do about uh, uh, making sand traps, all that kind of good stuff, water hazards. <laughs> I'm excited to do that too. Uh, so I think I'm going to put it over here. This will eat up a little bit of this dead zone area. And if I look at the size of this um, and what it's doing, I don't know what is going on with these. Why is there... Oh, I thought that was water. It's not water. It's some weird bushes. What is going on with this? There's like an old truck out here. Check this out. I never saw that. Was that there the whole time? I swear to God, this thing just popped up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back and look in the video. Because I swear to God, these things just popped up. As soon as I, like, clicked on the water pumping... That's that's crazy. I have never seen that, nor that reflective kind of area. Oh, see, there they go. They disappear when I look at it like that. My LOD. My load on demand. And there's an the archway. What is it? It's like this was an old farm ranch or something in this area. Check this out. That is trippy. Maybe I've just never zoomed in on the area close enough to notice. Oh, that was my squirrel moment. Okay, so I just had a squirrel moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I believe that this structure, let's see how big this is. All right? Is that right? There we go. So that fits into that kind of section. And, and I'm doing this for the purpose of, I want to understand what kind of distance I need here. So that distance is 11 units. So we want to make sure we have 11 unit sections. And I kind of wanted to make a square kind of grid that will fit three on each side. So I can build up to 12 of these in this area. And I'm going to go fart around with this a little bit. And I'll be right back. I, I think I have what I need to go off of right now. So we got this in place. The next step here is to allow this water to calm down some. That's why I put the water level so low. Uh, and I will raise it up uh, slowly over time. But if you put the water level right at the top, when this thing pours in here, it gets all violent. You can see how far up the edge each corner went as it's starting to fill. It'll eventually balance out and it'll relax down and get to a standard level. And then you can raise it up a little bit. And every time you do that, it's just like doing any kind of terraforming on the shoreline. Uh, if you do anything violent, it will violently affect 
the way the water flows. So this needs to go through its wave patterns and everything like that and calm the hell down. And uh, we will return to that. So you see the kind of layout I did there. All it is, I drew a road basically around where I wanted to go. I did it in 11 unit increments here in a 12 unit increment because it wasn't even, I can't do an odd amount on two sides of the main center point. So I did 12 units in the center, so it goes 11, 12, 11. And then I just gave five units on the corners here so that when I put one of these down in place, uh, I have space there between that and the next one next to it. So it's not overlapping and I can actually turn off anarchy and I can put this in place where I want it. It's gonna say space occupied right now because I got the roads there. And uh, that was the other thing I wanted to do is just test removing the roads and putting these down. Uh, how will they implement and, and I think that's good I mean it looks kind of odd and very out of place but I'm gonna try and hide it I'm gonna put a bunch of trees around this thing and stuff and just kind of hide the water farm a little bit tall trees like some evergreens or something I don't know we'll figure out something some big old redwoods or something along that lines and uh, yeah I think those I think that truck disappeared again man these guys do disappear a lot it seems like this is still working, but uh, you know, something I wanted to do here is I just wanted to draw this road around here. It just, it bugs me having to just come to here and stop. So I'm just gonna put, I think it's just a standard two lane road, right? Let's actually use our picker tool. Yeah, it's just our standard two lane road. So we can just take a straight road around this thing. Just go straight through. Oh, academic year. We got two of them, sweet. We got two academic works. Or were we already at, yeah, we were already at three. So we got 30% plus the disposition or something. I'm confused as to how I got two. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'll take it. We hit 100, 809 students. We had the attractiveness. We are now renowned. Sorry about these things in the front. Let's see if I can get those out of the way there. We are now renowned. Awesome. So tuition fees are now $10 a student. Exchange student bonus is 8%. That's awesome. So we have the university academic statue we can put down now. Cool. We can put down library. Very good. Math club. Nerd central. I love it. And school of medicine. Let's get some doctors. I bet that benefits hospitals and sick people in the city too. That'd be great. Uh, university commencement office. So here's where we can have our graduation ceremony. So we will be putting some of these down. Not this episode, but next episode. We will continue with putting some of these suckers down. That's awesome. So we gave a research grant. That's why I couldn't do it again. I forgot that I had already given a research grant. Um, sound sucker. Relentless partying in dormitories lead to the discovery of noise-canceling wallpaper? Oh, God, what a thing to have. That would be so cool to have noise-canceling wallpaper. <laughs> awesome. And uh, we did academic works. Uh, chirps effect on society. The study reveals alarming 35% decrease in face-to-face -face interactive interactions after extensive use of chirps. And I'll tell you what, it's it's hilarious that that is in place. I, I didn't laugh at it, but it is hilarious. Uh, I did a socialism study, not socialist, socialism, uh, which is a study of society. And one of my socialism studies was observing uh, interactions of people uh, coming into and going out of a uh, retail outlet. It, it was a it was a strip mall kind of thing. And I don't know if you know what a strip mall is. A strip mall is just a single uh, set of buildings and several businesses locate in in several small little sectors of that of that section of building. And it's typically just a one story place and it has a big parking lot and people can come to it. We call that a strip mall. And typically there's like one large place in it, like a Walmart or a uh, in Michigan we have Kroger and Meyer uh, I don't know what you guys have in other states I forget I used to travel a lot down south and I can't remember now but you know it would have like a large grocery store and then a lot of little satellite shops you know maybe an insurance place and uh, a shoe place to play buy shoes and and uh, a, a dog grooming place maybe even a little veterinary clinic or something like that and a little food outlet a subway and a little mexican restaurant or something like that you know and this and they would all go to a strip mall my point being i did a study on people coming in and out of walking from the parking lot and coming inside and i would walk up and down the walkway and i would just make eye contact with people and occasionally I would say hi. I tested saying hi 
I tested saying eye contact and I tested looking straight ahead, but watching them out of the corner of my eye. And I observed the actions of people. And anytime I made eye contact with somebody, they immediately looked down at their phone. They, they dug for their phone out of their pocket or something like that, pull out their phone and they just like, Oh my God, I don't want to interact with somebody. And, and I'm not a frightfully looking person. I'm kind of, a, I, I can be intimidating for my looks, but, uh, I, I come across friendly. And, however, and, and that's my point being that anytime I would say, take a moment and stop and say, hi, how you doing? Or good, good morning. Or, Hey, nice day. They would respond. And they would actually make eye contact back with me and say, yeah, it's a really nice day. Thank you. And they would smile back or I would just smile. If I, I, I didn't want to do the creepy look at them and just smile and continue on. That's a little bit more creepy. I wanted to actually interact. If I want to say hello, or, you know, hello, just something simple like that. Just one word, two word sentence or something. And it was really cool was getting the, uh, getting the feedback and putting that into a statistical report as to how people reacted. But I'll tell you what, people were constantly crossing the road, staring at their phone. I'm like, somebody's going to get killed, you know, walking because us in Michigan, we're aggressive drivers. We don't mess around. You, you, you're in our way and we want a Klondike bar. We're going to run your ass over. We don't, we don't even care. So you see how it's sucking the water dry over here a little bit. So that's going to agitate the water as well because it's now trying to refill this way. These guys will start sucking it down and uh, get it, it'll balance out again but what I'm gonna do is raise the water level as well now that these guys are sucking the water when I raise the water level it's not gonna react as violently but I'm not gonna go crazy I'm just gonna go to there so all that's gonna do is raise the water level just a little bit these guys should be able to suck out any additional water needs and keep it from overflowing over the side I hope Last thing I want is to flood this area because this is all very flat. And if it floods this way, it'd take out pretty much all Cooper Fields over there. So you see how it gets a little janky, a little, little, little wonky is the word I like to use. But these guys are sucking it enough. This would have flowed over the edge. Ooh, it still might. It's getting there. It's getting there. Don't go over. Don't do it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it's flooding just a little bit it should calm down that should calm down after this round here hopefully all right so that's going to do it for this episode as we take a look at spaghetti hills and all the improvements to this area and all the roads i really really like how this turned out uh i, I, I think it's looking very sharp i love this bridge <laughs> Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, please drop a like, comment, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, bell notification, all that kind of good stuff. And let me know wh what you'd like to see going forward and uh, where you'd like to see the series go. Um, I'm always happy to hear some feedback and, and get some ideas from you guys as well. So until next time, this is Mike of Dragon Rider Gaming. Thank you very much. Take care, stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye, everybody.